Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I am Chan Jae Gu, president of Dongseo University. Uh, it's my great honor to preside over this session, and I'm your moderator. And we have four panelists here. So when I call out their name, please give him or them a big round of applause. And we have Cha Young Ho, representative of HK Investment Korean Office. Please give him a big round of applause. And the second panelist is Jerry at T. Chen Rao, Ace direct, uh, Director of Jerry Ace. Please give him a big round of applause. And CEO of Autonomous Cluster Fund, Baozan Kankin. Please give him a big round of applause. Last but not least, we have Song Hyung from KSEID. Actually, this session is supposed to take nine uh, take ninety minutes, but actually we need to shorten to sixty minutes upon the request of our organization, and the theme is very important. But we have four panelists, and we only have one hour, so it's very difficult to keep the time limit. So I would like to allocate you the time, and please meet the time limit. And the theme is environmental changes and crisis management strategies in the Asian startup ecosystem. And it's very grandiose slogan and theme. So I'd like to divide this slogan into three components and Asian uh, startup ecosystem is first part. So really there is a big difference between Asian startup ecosystem and the Europe and the US ecosystem for startups. Is there any difference compared to them? So this is the first component I'd like to ask you to address. And then there is a ch environmental changes in the ecosystem for Asian startup. Then what would be the change looking like? And these changes are of an opportunity or of an risk. If that's a risk, then how can we mitigate the risks with certain strategies? Yeah. Okay, anyway. So I could then, so you are given one minute for introduction. So first, uh, introduce to you your name and your function and role to the floor. Please, Seo Young-ho, representative of HK Investment Current Office. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am representative of HK Invest Korean Office, Seo Young-ho. And coincidentally, in, in 1997 to 2016, I served as a representative to the London Invest and now I am serving as a representative of HK Investment Korean office. So I would like to share with you the perspectives of the Asian, Europe, and the US as well, building on my background and experiences. And what I'm doing here is that I would like to support Korean companies' advancement into the foreign market. And, and 270 Korean startups are supported by us. And of course, the big conglomerates are among the list and also a startup with two employees are supported by us. Thank you for giving me this great opportunity. And Ti Chun Hwan, please introduce yourself. My name is Jarek uh, from the Action Community for Entrepreneurship, also known as ACE in Singapore. We are the only national association for startups in Singapore and we're custodians of about 4,000 plus startups through advocacy uh, work in the ecosystem. Actually, we are also partners with Keyset in Singapore um, and we work with different accelerators, incubators, and we advocate for government policies for our startups in the creation of a vibrant startup ecosystem where we then support and create innovations in Singapore. Uh, we do have regional plans to support startups 
in Singapore to land around the Southeast Asia region, Korea especially, and we also invite and welcome Korean startups to come to Singapore and land in our vibrant ecosystem. Very happy to be here today, and thank you. And please, Kan Kin, introduce yourself. Uh, thank you. Nice to be here. I'm today representing Kazakhstan, so it's in Central Asia. I'm a CEO of uh, Tech Garden. In other words, it's a, it's a IT, IT hub, Techno Park. It's a full cycle IT hub. And in, in, in other questions, I will try to share with our experience about, uh, about our ecosystem. And we are responsible for startups, we are responsible for R&D, we are responsible for ecosystem. And I will try to share all the best. Thank you. Yeah, comes. And thank you very much. And uh, Song Heung, please. It's good to see you all. And I'm from KSEID. Uh, I am Song Heung, responsible for international cooperation. And KSEID is the one and only dedicated entity to support startups. And KSEID is supporting to be startups and the startup in the early phase and development and international entry and uh, re-challenge. So we support entire life cycle of startups and entrepreneurship. And actually, I was responsible for providing uh, startup st statistics and startup places, but now, I changed my role and I am engaged in communicating startup ecosystem. I hope today's forum will serve as a, conduc a cons constructive forum. And there are men of their caliber in startup ecosystem. And now without further ado, we'll, we'll take a deep dive into the discussion. So my first question is about the expression Asian startup ecosystem does this expression make sense well as i mentioned is there any difference between the asian startup ecology and the u.s or european startup ecology is there any uniqueness in asian environment that's the first question we don't have much time so please understand that the three minutes is the maximum time i can give each of you so we'll start from mr son Yes, that's a big question. That's a difficult question. So does this expression make sense? Asian startup ecology. Is there any unique about that? Well, when we talk about um, economy, we talk, to, we talk about economic block as in the continental separation. So we talk about Asian um, startup ecology as compared to European or American ecology, right? So the expression Asian startup ecology, what the word itself um, doesn't raise any opposition from anyone. But if you approach from a different perspective, if you look at the US startup ecology, what well, US market is one of the leading uh, markets in terms of startup. Uh, and US is a single country. So I'd like to rather look at European startup management, uh, startup environment. So the location of European countries is really good uh, in terms of travel and exchanges among the countries but if you look at asian countries the closeness is less than that in the european countries but that doesn't mean we can't say asian startup ecology that's not true because um, there's an asean which is a cooperative community in the southeast countries um, and we also have other cooperative bodies among the Northeast Asian countries, including Japan, China, and Korea. So we can talk about this Asian startup ecology. So in that regard, what could be the difference between the Asian startup ecosystem and the US and European ecosystem? What could be the difference? Well, as you all know, the U.S. and European markets are led by private players. The venture capitals and accelerators and other research institutes, they form a cluster or they pursue networking activities. So all of these activities are um, led by autonomous private initiatives. 
But um, things are a little bit different in Asian countries, and it's a little bit different from country to country in Asian region. And one common factor could be when most Asian countries are government-led initiatives, um, when we talk about startup projects, and private companies or private initiatives join the government initiative um, through cooperation. So that's the basic frame of Asian country startup ecosystem. Well, we can't say either one is right and either one is wrong. Um, it's hard to say that because all these systems reflect the characteristics and nature and uniqueness of each country. And the reason I'm saying this, um, I, I took the European countries as an example, but when you talk about starting up your own company, and especially after the COVID situation, the startup itself has become an international issue. And the startup is, has become all about international connection or global con connectivity. So European countries are close uh, to one another. Um, we're not that close compared to the European countries, but we can create this connectivity and closeness among Asian countries because we can also talk about intangible connectivity, um, not just the physical one. So we can connect um, the characteristics and uniqueness of each country to create synergy effect. Yes, um, your point's well taken. I, I strongly agree to your point because the Asian um, ecosystem is mostly about government-led initiatives. Um, and if you look at the economic development and industrial development also, the government has played a big role. Uh, I think uh, we can see, we, we observe the same thing in the startup ecology. So next. Opposite uh, opinion about uh, difference between Asian startup system and US startup system. I think ecosystem itself, it's a uh, very globalized thing, right? Uh, as a world itself. And uh, there are a lot of US uh, participants, uh, accelerators, startups based in Asia. And there is a lot of Asia startups, uh, uh, incubators based in US. And all knowledge, everything is available right now. And uh, of course, there is some minor changes, some minor, main, minor difference. But in general, generally speaking, it's all the same. More or less, we are very, very similar in startup ecosystem uh, in Central Asia, in the Pacific region, in the US, whatever, it's all the same, more or less. Okay, thank you for your opinion. So the system itself is quite similar anywhere. So it's not that different in the US, in the Pacific region, and in Asia. So there are more similarities than there are difficult um, differences. So next. Maybe I start off by my experience in Berlin, right, in Europe, and I've been in the ecosystem for three years. There is an interesting observation that I made there. So in the European ecosystem, even outside of Berlin, there are significantly less, a lot less Asian startups that you can find there. And also because the ecosystem support, I think, is kind of different in, in, in comparison to um, the way they operate. Right, the, uh, the sort of with the talents they have there. Uh, an example that I noticed when I was working there is, as you know, the European culture, when it is time to start work, they are on time and they end work on time. So the kind of a urgency in the Asian market um, or the kind of work that we put in within Asia, um, it's kind of not the same perspective in Europe. And also, if you look at the uh, government structure and the policy that supports the startups there, there are less of a government grants, like what we have here in Korea, what we have in Singapore, and other parts of Asian cities. There are a lot less of that, as I noticed. So in terms of where the startup innovation is in, they, they kind of work a little bit differently than what we see here in the Asian market. So I'm moving back into Asia. So if you look at Asia collectively as an ecosystem, right, combining a few countries all together, let's just say Vietnam, um, Thailand, Singapore, and Korea as a start, a couple of ecosystem works in there about the same time zone with different expertise, different talents. If you look specifically in South Korea, there are a huge amount of tech talents, right? There is a huge amount of software that's been created in the ecosystem. And these are supported by government agencies and, you know, events like that that promotes that. And we see that as a strong indication by the government to grow this ecosystem. So then if you look at my home country, Singapore, where the A's plays a role in advocacy work for the startups, right, working with government and government schemes that we put out there, 
that supports the startups, equally helping them launch and land in other countries such as Korea. So my opinion is the Asian ecosystem should work collaboratively to have a different startups of different countries, but be part of the collective Asian ecosystem, where then we can leverage on where their home country government that supports them and their grants to scale them, right? Maybe they raise the first round of funding from their country, and then when they go to another country to expand, hire talents, look into new technology, or even, you know, merge an acquisition with other startups, and then that can prosper all together. So that's kind of my opinion. Yeah, I share more uh, yes, you pointed out how we can leverage these differences even among Asian countries. Thank you. And next, Mr. Sa. Well, Asian startup ecosystem and European startup ecosystem, the difference between the two. I'd like to have a different approach in terms of market entry barrier. Well, this market entry barrier can work in a different way um, depending on the company because one element can be a barrier but the same element can be a booster uh, for example getting a visa itself can be a market entry barrier in the european countries and u.s country so you have to address this market barrier individually case by case country by country and Hong Kong has a government-led incubators, um, the incubating center covers all the areas and Hong Kong Science Park covers R&D based approach. Um, it's more conducive and favorable to companies that pursue R&D activities together. So I have an experience in London, so there's this tech street in London, downtown area. So there's this corridor of IT and tech companies. And uh, 10 years from now, I took the public servants of Korea and other, other um, entrepreneurs into this tech street. And I got questions from them. Is there, where, where is tech street? So I'm like, you are in the tech street. So they don't even know what Tech Street is, where the Tech Street is. So if it were in Asia, you know, it's about setting up a hardware and government-led initiatives and projects. And then there's a system support and software support. But in the US and European countries, it's more about autonomous and voluntary initiatives led by the private companies and private players. And then there, there is a government support later. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opinions. So there is a difference between the US, Asian and European ecosystem for startups. So listening to your remarks, um, there are differences, but there are also similarities. And move on to the second component. So we talk about the environmental changes in ecosystem. So building on your experiences on the ground, what kind of changes in startup ecosystem take place? Could you please hear with us the changes in the startup ecosystem in Asia? So Mr. So, would you go for go first? So actually, I've been it's been six years since I took this function. And the uh, particular changes in Asian startup ecosystem are difficult to be defined. But in case of Hong Kong, foreign investment, uh, foreign capitals are there. And most of them come from the UK and the US and Australia. Of course, the Western capital still remains, but outflow of the Western capital is prominent. And also the mainland China's capital is in. Alibaba and other big organization from China made a huge investment in Hong Kong. So they put a lot of capital and operate this capital in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong and China and building on Hong Kong, they try to advance into the Asian market. Then if you are in this case, then you can utilize the China capital operating in Hong Kong. So that would be one of the benefits you can take. 
most out of Hong Kong capital. And so compared to the pre, uh, past Asian capital is gravitated toward Hong Kong. Okay, then Jerick, could you please share? I'd like to offer us a different shade of opinion there. and I do agree that it, on the Hong Kong portion as well. So I guess environmental changes, I look at it a little bit differently on top of just the constant changes in the ecosystem environment. If I be specific about ESG, the environment, the social governance, that we are looking at the compliance and framework that is I'm seeing beginning to increase compliance within the ecosystem. So then the question is, how does that affect the startups in the ecosystem in terms of your sustainability goal, for example? Um, I guess one of the trending topics we're looking around here is the a carbon offsetting, the carbon emissions by the different corporations. And the startups plays actually a role in here as well. Because if the startups move into reducing carbons on the services and the product they are offering, and they provide that for the corporate partners they are working with, or even government projects they are trying to aim for, it will create an advantage to the startups if they are compliance with ESG. And I'm seeing that increasingly in Asia, especially in Singapore, we are starting up a framework and a carbon tax on the startups and the businesses, you know, your MNCs that's operating in, within the country, and that will cascade over to the ASEAN countries. So eventually, every Asian countries will then be looking into how to reduce carbon um, emission as well. And there's always the Paris Agreement, your COP27, that is actually looking into how as collective front, as a global country, right, all of us, every country in reducing that. So I see the changes in the environment and the parts the startup can play with, starting with the startups as they're starting a new business field and where they're creating solutions, then they have an added advantage in the ESG portion. Yeah, I just thought, uh... Thank you very much for pointing out good point. And in Asia, ESG changes are taking place in Asian ecosystem. And you also put much emphasis on the incentive are that there are given to startups who adhere to compliance. And Tantin, please. Based on, on our experience, uh, we did environmental changes through policy making. So three years ago, we established the uh, Astana IT Hub. Uh, and we did uh, tax preferences for us and have participants. It's zero for capital gain, it's zero for corporate income tax, it's zero for VA, VAT, it's, uh, it's, it's more or less zero tax for all participants uh, at this Asana IT Hub. Uh, on top of that, we, uh, after Asana Expo 2017, the government granted uh, all exhibitions to the Asana IT Hub, so it's around 22,000 square meters, which are subsidized for our participants. So we start uh, first year for free, and after we uh, increase the payments, but uh, it's a, it's a good, it was a good start for to move uh, and to collect a uh, startup ecosystem around the Kazakhstan in one place. Uh, on top of that, uh, we did a co-living. So Asana IT Hub, we bought apartments uh, for our participants also for free. So uh, all startups around the Central Asia motivated to move to Astana IT Hub to work there. So it's uh, visa free, it's uh, tax free. We have a co-living so you can live uh, for free. And uh, there is, uh, I mean, another incentives uh, in Astana IT Hub. That's how we work. Uh, on top of that, in Kazakhstan, we are facing uh, venture, lack of venture money. I mean, we are, we are not like uh, uh, most of the Asian countries, we are very, very small. Uh, so what we did from policy making, uh, there is obligation for our uh, um, commodities companies to pay one person out of the turnover on yearly basis to local startups. So every year they pay one, they invest one person out of the net turnover to R&D through local startups. That's how we want to add from government side uh, to venture. There is also a good instrument maybe to, to use in, uh, not maybe in Korea, but maybe in other countries of Asia. Thank you. So actually listening to your experiences taught me that the government led incentives are given through which 
the government put much effort to create a startup ecosystem. And Mr. Son? So actually, this is my ta turn to talk about the policies environment. So let me touch upon the management ecosystem. So it's not limited only to Asia. It is a global trend in changes of management. Of course, startup ecosystem is polarized. And the second one is the de investment, transparent in Korea and in Asia. And last one is ESG, but someone is talking about the ESG sector. So I will only brief you on the second uh, two components. So ecosystem is polarized. And CV Insight is well known to you. And Global Unicorn, they are counting Global Unicorn companies. And current status taught me that the US, China, and India's unicorn companies account for 74% of the entire unicorn companies, which means domestic markets are well established, and those countries with well established markets are easy to establish and produce unicorns. And of course, in, in other countries, there is a limitation for startups to s easily scale up with limited domestic market. So domestic startups only focus on the domestic market, then they are not going to able to be going to evolve into unicorn companies. And this also boosts the polarization in the startup ecosystem. And second component is the decline in investment you are aware of, right? So the interest rate is increasing and the baseline interest are increasing and our economy is in uh, is nearing the recession. And also there is a great uncertainty in starting a new business. Of course, we are witnessing the difficulties to attract investment on the ground. And I read an article from Frankfurt News and I look at the Q3 investment trend, global venture investment dramatically retreated or dropped. And uh, no one knows for sure we, are ex we will experience another dramatic change in Q4 in 2022 in investment. So of course, there are many challenges ahead of startups and I believe the next topic would be the responses to changes in ecosystem. You talked about the ESG and polarization and the decline in investment. So there are the changes in ecosystem. And now let me move on to the third component. So you talked about environmental changes. So some companies can leverage these changes into an opportunity, but others can be just swayed away amid these changes. So if this is a crisis, then how do we have to, how do we overcome this crisis? We need a set of strategy, right? So we'll start from Mr. Kankin. We'll start with Mr. Kang Kane, please. Thank you. So, uh, environmental changes, that's uh, opportunity or? That's the main driver of all major. changes in our world. So without all these changes uh, in healthcare, in fintech, in security, in transparency, we wouldn't have all these unicorns what we have as of now. That's why I, I, I always, maybe I'm optimistic in, in the life in my life and uh, I always see a lot of opportunities in all these changes, uh, in environmental changes. So I'm, I'm quite positive in all these crises, in all these changes, and all these changes will change the world and will move uh, forward. Your, you always, your comment is always brief. Um, you are good at timekeeping. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Next, Mr. Hao, Teaching Hao. 
Um, so opportunity of crisis, right? And we're looking at, I see it in two ways. So one, there are definitely a lot of opportunities for startups, for corporations in the environment changes. Um, as we are speaking about fundings, we're talking about ESG framework, we're also talking about the government support. As we're entering a sort of a soft recession around the Asian ASEAN market um, wise, across all the Asian countries, Asia countries as well, they are significantly drop, and we are sensing that from what A's perspective is in the investment money is coming in, even in Singapore as well. Uh, and we see that as also as a global movement starting from the US. Um, so the amount of fundings that we can attract as a startups has then got to be a bit more creative uh, than what it usually is. So on top of a huge pitch of why your solution is that great, why would that be the best solution for the corporate? You have to add on new things, and that's where the opportunity is. If you're looking at ESG, it's an added advantage. In terms of, on top of getting our services, we help with your ESG compliance, for example. And that's value adds into the corporates they are trying to work with, for example. And that is where the opportunity, I think, is. So for most corporates who have, of course, a wider customer base, they have kind of a little bit more money to spend, they are willing to invest in that. Then your questions might lie in, what about the SME, your small, medium-sized enterprises? Can they afford to use a solution like that? Can they afford to pay more for ESG compliance kind of solution? Then there's, in their opinion, that could have been some kind of crisis for them. Because now with the taxation coming in carbon and the government framework saying that you have to be greener or we'll start taxing you or we put restrictions around some parts, right? And we see that in countries even like China, where are starting their carbon tax as well. So in all that changes, these small, medium-sized companies will definitely kind of be constrained or restricted, and they will see that a little bit as a crisis uh, from themselves. So if you combine the two things together, a crisis and the opportunities, the opportunity lies for the startups, Right? There's less fundings, but there are opportunities to come, come forward to work with the corporates for their solutions. Right? But they have to look even in themselves whether they can provide these ESG compliance solutions. Uh, the government has also the same amount of support there for them, with lesser funding, that is. Um, that's my opinion. Yeah, ESG 관련해서 아까 또 말씀해 주, 지금도 말씀을 해 주셨는데, 아까 말씀하셨듯이, 그 팬... Yes, as you said, the venture companies, especially the small, small and medium companies, well, if there's too much too strict compliance requirements, then these SMEs might be relocating to countries with less strict ESG compliance. What do you think? That's actually a very good point. That I think um, now, if you look at the, um, if you're absolutely right to say in Singapore we start off the carbon emission tax as as a um, one point of discussion. A, a, the small medium-sized company then will look to move into the region, which is absolutely what's happening. We, we take an example, they move to Indonesia, they move to Vietnam, where the such compliance has not happened, and there's opportunity for them to continue operating as it is with lower costs. So the government is aware, and A's role is actually to help even our startups to go overseas, regionally tap onto resources uh, that's available there. So if you look at two key countries for today's discussion, if I move to Vietnam, I can have lower manufacturing costs. Um, as a company, even as a startup. If I'm a hardware startup, I, I produce lower, um, I have lower labor costs there. So I produce my hardware component in less cost in a factory in Vietnam, and not caring about ESG to be honest. Uh, but if I come to Korea, I have higher quality tech talent, right? Uh, with probably lesser labor costs can compare to Singapore as well. So if startups to be neighbor, no longer can just be in one country, especially in Singapore, such a small country. They have to be global. I will have tech talent in Korea, I will have manufacturing in Vietnam, and maybe have finance services in Indonesia, where they have good fintech in that country. So the startups are then encouraged by our government and, and support from our organization is to bring them regionally to look into the resources and advantage in East Asian country. Right, so that's a very good point. Oh. Yes, thank you. So crisis versus opportunity. Well, this applies to any any company, any entity. So there's a change. This, this could either be crisis, and if you adapt yourself well, then that crisis can turn itself into an opportunity. So I'd like to share my experience. 
three years ago, I met with a company that developed a tour drive, um, autonomous driving, comp autonomous driving software. And this company was operating a U.S. presence in Silicon Valley. And Ohio state government was really active in adopting this autonomous driving technology. And this company that uh, relocated to Cincinnati, Ohio State. And I visited this branch in Ohio. And this U.S. branch is now hiring 60 engineers. So I asked the um, president, what is the reason for your success? And he said, the president said, the Ohio State government was really active in supporting the technology. So um, that's how the company won the contract in transforming the airport and terminal system into autonomous operating system. So um, the ambition of this president is to turn all the systems at the airport, U.S. airport, into autonomous driving system and the logistics system, too, in two or three years. That was uh, the ambition of the president. So my point here is that, and my point doesn't apply to all the companies, but each company, each government, each local government or each central government has different policy sets um, that could support your initiative. So if you do your research well, then you're going to find the government that fits just perfectly to your in, um, portfolio and ambition. Thank you. Mr. Son? A crisis and opportunity always exist together. So I'm going to just skip the general comments, which were already covered by all of you. Well, from the perspective of policy, crisis is a crisis. Well, a lot of startup companies are going through a set of crises these days. So our perspective is to give the most relevant support to help these companies get through this crisis and how to help companies that fell um, once to rise up again and back to their position. So this um, conference is all about improving the environment or conditions for startup. So I, I understand this um, objective of this whole conference. The rationale behind this conference is to give help or assistance to Asian startups or potential startups. But different countries have different, different policy sets. But um, sharing information and trying to build a network among Asian countries is also an important objective of this conference. It should be an important objective of this conference. So uh, all the startups want to go through this crisis stronger and more prosperous. But that definitely requires cooperation among countries from the perspective of policy support. Yes, thank you for the comments. Uh, many Asian countries have different sets of support. Uh, so that could be a good tool um, to be utilized by startup companies to get through this crisis. So building a network um, is really important. Yes, I do agree. So we're going to move on to the last question. Go on. And I believe this is the most important question to all of you. So actually, Busan Metropolitan City is a host of Fly Asia 2022 with a view to make Busan Metropolitan City evolve into a Asian startup ecosystem hub. This is a big dream that Busan has. So we try to invite all of you to share your experiences, but at the same time, we'd like much like to listen to you with regards to recommendations to Busan City so it can become an Asian startup ecosystem hub. And of Busan, so could you, you are not from Busan City, right? So you might not know well about Busan City, but building on your short experiences in Busan, could you please share with us recommendations to Busan City so that it can become an Asian startup hub? It is very important question to all of Busan local residents. So could you please go first for Mr. So, is there any recommendations you would like to provide us? It's very difficult question though, right? Two years ago, uh, actually Busan 
a dose from Busan City reached out to me for my help. That was like Hong Kong is not good at financial market at the time, and the security companies companies and banks in Hong Kong will run out. So Busan City reached out to me to attract those securities companies and financial sector companies. And you might know that it's very difficult, right? But actually, they reached out to me for a simple help. And to be honest, in order for us to develop financial market, we need to nurture bankers, investors, HR personnel, lawyers, attorneys, and uh, asset management managers and accountants. And of course, the language should be English, right? These are the prerequisite. And the tech system is of great importance to become a trailblazer in financial market and sector. So in that sense, there are a lot of there are a whole lot of room for improvement in Busan. So I don't think Busan is ready for this. But actually, in my opinion, Busan's ecosystem is far behind these requirements. But Busan's population and the surrounding industries hold a great potential for startups to grow their own. And the fundamentals are there in Busan city. And Busan City should come up with policy schemes to support startups. Then they are able to attract investment and they also create a great networking opportunities for startups. Of course, Busan has a sheer limitations because its size and the market size as well. So neighboring countries like Singapore, Japan, and China, they try to reach out to those neighboring countries by providing startups with support policies. Then this will be a good opportunity to startups in Busan city. And yesterday I pay a visit to Daegu city's company and there are a lot of liquidity in Daegu city so Daegu city tries to make an investment in startups so they reach out to me to introduce startups to be invested but that was not the role that I am engaged in so that was a role for matchmaker so that role can be done by Busan Metropolitan City or some startup centers. Then this will lay the fertile ground for Busan startups to attract foreign investment or other regional investment. Thank you very much and thank you for being honest. Nurturing experts are great important. So as a professor, I feel responsibility in some sense. And also Busan needs to reaching reach out to neighboring countries like Japan and China and Singapore. So this should be supported by the Busan local government. And that would be a great reference to Busan city's policies. And Jerick or Ti Chun Hao, could you please share your recommendations to Busan city? I guess it's one of the toughest questions to be answered, as <laughs> is rightfully pointed out. Um, so I, I, I offer a different opinion, I would think. If you look at Korean market itself, there's around, as I last checked, 18 unicorn or so that's created in Southeast, from Southeast Asia. There's about 25 in Singapore. The number's not too far away. And uh, I lean into the kind of work that my organization that I represent ACE does in Singapore. We've set up for close to 20 years um, to set up a brand new startup ecosystem in Singapore. It started from nothing 20 years ago to what we are now, right? And, and I think looking back in answering this question, what will work for Bushan is, is a tall order. I don't think we all have the answer. But what I can say is maybe we start internally. Bushan can support the growth of the startup in Seoul and the neighborhood countries, sorry, the neighboring cities around Seoul if they're operating in, to attract them in Bushan to then form this ecosystem within Korea first. Maybe that bumps up your number on Unicorn to 25, 30, 35. Then that creates a vibrant Korean ecosystem to begin with, right? Then in that aspect, Bushan's then now become more ready to be, as you rightfully point out, international. They have more higher English-speaking abilities. 
they are more fluent with working in time zones, your Caucasians, your Europeans, and people that work in different ways and manner, right? Then they create a culture and a support structure that does that. The government then can put in policies to support that further. Maybe a reduction in the ecosystem for foreign startups to land here in terms of taxes, in terms of providing the spaces for them, right? Uh, maybe first three years, lower income bracket for them, so that they pay less tax, etc. Then that will slowly start to increase the advantage in coming to Bhushan to set up. But we can tap in on resources as both here and in the whole part of Korea as a startup coming in. I would think in my opinion, if we start the ecosystem within Bhushan to first support Korea, and then start supporting the neighborhood countries in, in the likes of Japan maybe, right? And maybe Taiwan, Hong Kong, and then Singapore, right? If startups are creative bunch of entrepreneurs, um, I would think, that, that as, as I was a founder myself, I, if I see opportunity coming here, getting talents, and in the universities, I think, um, where there are a lot of R&D, deep tax, IPs, which are untapped, and there is that. And I can come here as a founder to then leverage on these IPs for my startups that give me an advantage. And normal SaaS startups, for example, with an IP is a huge advantage, market competitiveness. Then if I see Korea has the infrastructure, they have English speaking developers, the developers are great talent, there's IP from universities, the youth are keen on entrepreneurship. Then I can come here and set up. And I think as a startup, I would do that. Now, if you look at my home country in Singapore, when we started the journey of entrepreneurship, we look at ourselves, we are a small country with no resources, we only have humans. What we did is to look into uh, what ACES calls it, the five pillars. You look into your universities in creating young entrepreneur minds. What does it take to be an entrepreneur? Do you need English? Do you need computer science skills? Do you need hardware skills? Right? And then we move into government policies, Corporate partnership, do you work in the likes of Hyundai, right? Your corporate government, say, a neighbor cloud, for example. We work with your corporates that's here in Korea to support that. Then we move into ecosystem support, for example. What's your incubator that's here, the accelerator, that is commercial accelerators that supports that, or government fronted uh, incubation accelerators that do that. And last but not least, uh, how that we promote that awareness of entrepreneurship as the next step or as, even as a career for the young people or make career switch um, personnel here in, in Korea. That's my opinion. Yeah. Thank you very much. And in Busan, you first created a startup ecosystem internally in Busan. You eloquently pointed out. And of course, we need to increase the high fluency in English. And that is a great point. Thank you. And Kankin, CEO Kankin, could you please share your recommendations to Busan City? Uh, so personally, Busan, Busan is an amazing, beautiful city. I would wish Almaty to be like a Busan in the future. Uh, as I answered in our first question, we all, all agencies, all governments, we all using the same instruments, more or less. It's a venture, it's a policy making, there is some incentives, there is a lot of instruments. We all do the same, but devil in details. So what we receive from my experience after Russia-Ukraine crisis, there is a lot of Russian-Ukraine companies relocated from their countries. In one day, we have a good experience. In one day, thousands and thousands of people across border and move to neighborhood countries. And when we did a Q&A session, like an uh, interview with all these people, why you moved to Kazakhstan, to Almaty? We thought that it's uh, some tax incentives, maybe there is a lot of different motivations, but the answer was very simple. That was the people and environment. They went to Almaty, they moved to Almaty because it was friendly, eco-friendly, uh, easy to live, cost of living, just simple, simple things that we never thought would be a factor to people to move to Almaty. And from this perspective, I think that Busan should think about it a little bit. Maybe another advice as uh, after Asna Expo, I mean, in 2030, you will have uh, Busan Expo, right? And maybe it's also a good idea to convert all this area to big, biggest startup IT hub in, in Asia. 
maybe it would be good for Busan to have some special tax regime, independent from uh, central regime. Maybe it should be tax-free totally, total tax-free, no, no tax at all. There is, should be some mo good motivations for people to move and uh, to live in Busan. Uh, I think that's uh, a few recommendations from my, from my side. Thank you. So actually the motivation is of great importance and uh, of course their instrument and incentives are important but we need to lay the fertile ground. In particular, Busan should make most, most out of their strength and so they try to provide a livable place for foreign startups provided by Busan City. Last but not least, Mr. Sun, could you please share with us your recommendations to Busan City? And I am the last speaker that puts me a lot of burden, right? Because all of three speakers mentioned everything that I want to say. So as a disclaimer, my opinions are personal opinions different from my organization and when i work for a local government they throw a question how can we do and my answers are also the same and similar depend so every region has their own uniqueness so every region should take most out of their uniqueness and local government should find out incentives rolled out to startups so and the three speakers already mentioned these things silicon valley when you think of the us you the silicon valley comes to your mind first and when you think of uh, korea the seoul is the most eco uh, most startup friendly area and re ranks number 10 in terms of the cities with an environment conducive to startups. Because Seoul Metropolitan City has a good resources and infrastructure, then every startup should go to Silicon Valley? No, it's not the case. In case of New York, media companies are concentrated and it is Silicon Valley. So media-related startups are concentrated in the New York City, not in the Silicon Valley. So Busan is famous for international movie event. So actually, Busan should utilize their strength to become a global city. So they have to roll out some items that garner attraction from global participants and they and building on this strength they are able to seize a great opportunity by providing startups with eco friend uh, startup friendly uh, ecosystem but I am belonging to organizations so my opinions are my personal opinions so you said Busan should pay attention to their uniqueness and their strength to lay the foundation for startup ecosystem. And all the four panelists shared with us recommendations to Busan City to become an Asian startup hub, and they're very honest. And so I would like to give you some minutes to deliver final remarks or closing remarks. So could you go first? So actually many of you are related to startups and I supported 270 startups and large corporations to advance into the foreign market. So spirit of challenge or ch spirit of challenge is important. So don't be afraid of going into the global market. So be passionate to identify and utilize and leverage on the foreign countries support schemes so your startups can advance into the foreign market in a proactive manner. I think I, I must say I'm, I'm be Asia and uh, I, I'm sure a lot of us as well. There's a lot of advantages in Asia and in Asia market itself, we should ought to be collaborative. There are a lot of things that we can learn from our Western counterparts. But in Asia, what we have is, I think, the willingness to work together. 
like regardless of the country they are coming from, could it be Japan, it is Korea, it's Singapore, it's Thailand, Kazakhstan, it wouldn't matter. Uh, collectively, I think if you see Asia as a whole and as a startup, you have a lot of runway. You have a lot of opportunities to be anywhere in Asia where you can take advantage of um, manufacturing costs, labor costs, tech talent, right, and even time zone. So if you have a setup in Australia, as an example, and then Singapore, right, you pretty much can cover a good portion of time zone as well. So I encourage any founders here, the startups entrepreneurs, academics, and the audiences sitting here, or just thinking about the startups. Um, there's no better time to do it right now. The recession, as we know, is coming. It's both an opportunity and not a crisis uh, for us to get started. Thank you. Yeah. Duncan? Duncan, please. Uh, devil in details. As I mentioned two or three times, we all use the same ingredients. We Everybody understand what to do. It's easy, right? It's not rocket science. So everybody understand what to do, but the main thing that devil in details, it depends how you would mix all your ingredients in one product, which, in which volume you will put all these ingredients. And that's what makes one startup successful, another not successful. So that's why devil in details, we have to be very, very careful with all these ingredients and we have to, to be uh, I mean, all decisions should be data-driven. I mean, it's available right now. All your decisions should be data-driven. And once you uh, do all, I mean, steps, uh, you you would be uh, more likely successful. Thank you. Yeah, Son Shil-Jang-nim. Mr. Son, recently I studied what innovation looks like. And there is a commonality in innovation, is a freshness. And keynote speakers mentioned innovation, and they also talked about the entrepreneurship and startups. And I truly believe you are paying much attention, and you put a high interest in ecosystem of startup, and you are the entities and players in the startups ecosystem. So I hope you should find the freshness so that you can create innovation. And last but not least. My special thanks go to all the organi organization committee for inviting me to this important event. Thank you very much. And for all of four panelists provide us with insights and there are youth startups and your insights will be inspirational to youth startups. And so you shared with us recommendations to Busan City to become a genuine Asian startup hub. So actually, it's very regrettable for us not to receive questions from the floor, for, but for the interest time, we are not able to do that. So this ends the first session and panel discussion. Thank you very much for your participation. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you very much. And actually, we listened to recommendations to Busan Metropolitan City to become a genuine Asian startup hub. And so language and policies and instruments and the uniqueness of a region are topics that are addressed. So your insights will be incorporated into the future Busan policy scheme. Then this will make Busan genuine Asian startup hub. So my special thanks go to all the moderator and the panel list. So please give them a big round of applause.